Hey, paper callers. In this lesson, we're going to cover the paper call and call center terms glossary. Now, it's really important that you understand all the material in this lesson because you're going to be using these terms whenever you're working with affiliates, call centers, call buyers, brokers, and paper call networks. Abandonment rate. This is the percentage of callers who hang up before connecting to an agent. And so most call centers monitor their abandonment rate and keep track of it because they want to abandon as few calls as possible because that's money left on the table for everyone involved in the paper call value chain. Now an abandoned call or an abandon or abandons are calls that are not answered before the caller hangs up. So if a caller calls in and is put on hold or even just hangs up in the first few seconds of a call, we consider that call abandoned. ACD, automatic call distrib distributor, or ACD status, is a telecommunication system that distributes incoming calls to a specific group of targets or agents. And so agents in a, inside of a call center set their current ACD status or current status to available or not available on break, something of that nature, and then the call center's phone system distributes calls to agents based on what their current status is. The ACL, or average call length, uh, is when viewing statistics for a campaign, the average call length is represented by taking the total number of minutes and dividing them by the total number of calls. For instance, if your campaign has 10 calls with 600 minutes of total talk time on the phone, the ACL or average call length would be 600 minutes divided by 10 calls for 60 minutes per call uh, or an overall ACL of 60 minutes. A lot of times people look at the ACL statistic and use it to determine quality. A really quality source of calls is gonna have a much higher average call length than uh, maybe a call stream of lesser quality. And that's because the higher quality call streams uh, have people who are more interested in actually speaking with the call center, they wanna buy the product or service, and so the average time of those calls is higher. An agent, this is a person who answers the call in a call center regardless of their job function. So whether they do sales, fulfillment, customer service, troubleshooting, support, whatever, an agent is someone who works in a call center and answers the phone. Agent productivity. This is a performance metric for determining the productivity of an agent in a call center using factors like abandonment rate, average handle time, after call work, and other metrics that they use to keep track of whether an agent is performing uh, above the requirements that that call center has for whatever campaigns that they're running. AHT, or average handle time. The average amount of time an agent is occupied in an incoming call or the average of all the time across numerous agents or an entire call campaign. So what someone will say is, what's the AHT of your calls? And what they're looking for is the average handle time or the average call length can be uh, dropped in in the same sentence to figure out if your calls perhaps match up to some of the other call sources that they're already working with. It's also a metric that's used to monitor agents inside of a call center to make sure that they're selling properly and the quality of their communication on, their, on the phone is also up to par. Allocate numbers. This is assigning numbers or issuing new numbers to a number pool, campaign, offer, or publisher inside of your call tracking platform. Area code. This is a three digit code that identifies different areas of the United States Canada, and other certain countries. So it's the first three digits of a phone number and it tells the caller uh, where the phone call is coming from. Barge in or barge. This is the ability to listen to a live call without the knowledge of the agent or a caller. So it allows call centers to spy on their agents essentially and listen to what's happening on a live call so that they can take notes and coach that agent at a later time. Bi-directional two-way SMS is a messaging system for sending and receiving text messages that allows commercial users to reply to the text messages as they come in. For instance, typically bulk SMS are sent out to users 
and the user is expected to click a link or call a number or interact with the information inside the SMS in some way. However, nothing prevents the user from replying to the SMS and most systems do not allow continuous communication or a conversation to take place. But if you do have a bi-directional SMS system or a bi-directional enabled SMS phone number, you can actually converse with that person. And so what a lot of contact centers will actually do is have SMS conversations just like they do live chat with users that are interested in products or services or users that need some type of customer support. A blocked call is, uh, are calls that are automatically terminated due to identifying the caller as unwanted or spam. And so inside of Ringba, for instance, you can block specific caller IDs or anonymous calls or other type of calls or prefixes that you determine are not valuable to you. And you can uh, use that blocked call filtering to make sure that your call flows are of the highest quality. BPO or business process outsourcing company uh, that can be also said as a BPO or a BPO center or a BPO call center. It's simply a company that provides outsourcing services for a specific business or specific business activity. And so typically these companies operate at large scale and are contact centers. So a BPO usually has hundreds of employees or sometimes even thousands of employees and they lease those employees and their other services out to companies that need them but don't want to invest in a full scale contact center. And so if you're just getting started and you want to have your own call center, or maybe you want to find a call center that can help you with quality assurance or qualifying raw calls and turning them into transfers, you can go out and find a BPO and that BPO will actually operate the call center for you and run the campaign for you, take care of all your human resources, all the management, everything that you don't want to do when you're first getting started. So BPOs are great resources and a great way to accelerate your business without actually having to open up a contact center of your own. A busy signal is a tone used to indicate that the party on the receiving end of a call is currently in another conversation. And so that busy signal says that whoever you're calling isn't available, whether that is a single person on a single phone line or a call center. A buyer, this is the party responsible for buying a call. In Ringba, targets can be assigned to buyers who are their owners with sub accounts. So buyers can log in and see all their statistics and payouts for all of their targets and campaigns. Buyers can be assigned to multiple targets in Ringba because sometimes they have different partners, queues or campaigns uh, all in the same brokerage or network, or maybe it's the same call center running multiple campaigns but buyers are essentially the people who are receiving the phone call at the end of the day and paying for them on a pay per call basis. Call attribution. By linking calls to a specific source and user data, it allows you to optimize your campaigns and attribute the call's revenue to a specific traffic source and other call sources. Without detailed information about who is and is not calling, it is not easy to optimize your campaigns by performance and that's why you need to use a call tracking or call attribution platform like Ringba to track your calls. Otherwise, you're just simply gonna lose a lot of money. A call center, this is a business that's set up to handle a large volume of telephone calls. And so the average call center is somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 50 seats. And so that means that they have anywhere from 60 to 150 employees. Call centers, on the other hand, get very, very large. Some of the largest call center companies in the world have hundreds of thousands of employees all over the world. Uh, and some call centers in a single facility can reach up to three or 5,000 seats, which means that facility is gonna have six to 15,000 employees. So they get very, very large. Call center efficiency. Call center efficiency is the process of optimizing the operations of a call center, including call response time, handle time, abandonment rate, average handle time, agent productivity, and caller satisfaction. And so the people responsible for operating a call center are always worried about that call center's efficiency. And that is how well they're handling calls and achieving the actual goal that they set out to do. Now in a sales call center, 
call center efficiency refers to the amount of salespeople on the phone at any given time. And your goal is to maximize the efficiency of the call center. And that's to keep every single agent on the phone selling as much as possible. And so that's a balancing act typically for a call center, unless they use load balancing technology like Ringba, and then they can run their call center at a significantly increased efficiency rate compared to just using their phone system to do it. Call duration is the length of a call from the moment it is connected to our server and the moment the call is terminated. This is also referred to as call length or the length of the call. And this metric can be applied to any phone call, whether it goes through Ringba or not. So if you pick up your iPhone and call a friend, the call duration is from the time they answer to until the time one of you guys decides to hang up. A call log is an in-depth log of all the calls, details, metadata, call recording, and any other data associated with that call. Uh, and it's aggregated after a call completes. So after calls complete, you can look at detailed information about the log and figure out what happened on that call, why there were errors, who hung up the call, all sorts of marketing information. Uh, it's really important stuff, and we're gonna dive into call logs further in the course. Call tracking is the process of associating uh, advertising sources with generated calls. And so you wanna track where your phone calls come from, like what keywords they come from in Google or what affiliates drove those calls to you. And you wanna keep track of all the information associated with those calls so you can operate your business effectively. A call queue, this is where calls are held when they cannot be immediately answered by agents. Queues typically run on a first in, first out basis, but also can be configured into priority and waterfall scenarios. And so when a call flows into a call center, if no agent is available to answer that call, it's held in a queue. And then typically the first calls that land in a queue are the first ones that get answered, unless they have other reasons to be prioritized. For instance, a higher value call may be moved to the top of the queue when it comes in if there are a bunch of people waiting. Caller ID or caller identification, uh, which is also called the CNAM uh, and includes the caller name, is the phone number and name of the caller. And this system allows you to see who is actually responsible or owns the phone number of an end user when they make a phone call. A campaign, uh, these are settings assigned to a specific group of actions, publishers, or targets to meet the needs of your clients. And so anytime you're working on something in pay per call, you're gonna be either running a campaign or working on a campaign and inside Ringba or even other platforms, they're called campaigns. And so a campaign is gonna be a specific group of uh, calls and clients and publishers and affiliates that are all working on the same thing. So for instance, you may have a pay per call campaign for a back brace product. You may have a pay per call campaign for towing calls. But essentially, every single type of call and every single group of affiliates and buyers are grouped into something that we call a campaign. Capacity. This is the amount of call traffic or concurrency a target or call center or network or buyer can handle. And so anytime someone's talking about capacity, they're talking about the volume of calls that they can receive over a period of time or the volume of calls that they can receive at any given specific moment. Now, capacity management is the management of the human resources to match the number of predicted inbound calls throughout the day. And so for a call center, capacity management is usually a balancing act and pretty problematic. They're trying to match the number of inbound calls that come through with the number of humans that are supposed to show up for work that day. And since the number of inbound calls aren't always that predictable, and neither, frankly, are the humans that are supposed to show up for work, they have to kind of balance that capacity uh, and try and keep people connected on the phone so they don't waste any phone calls. This is a really big operational problem for call centers, and it's something that you can help them with by using a platform like Ringba that can automate all of the capacity management of your call flow without having to monitor it throughout the day. A carrier is a company that's authorized by a regulatory agency to operate a telecommunication system. So a carrier can be level three or AT&T or even small regional phone companies that 
uh, operate the actual copper wires in the ground, or it can be a cell phone company. It's essentially anybody that's authorized to sell voice and other telecommunication systems to the public. A CLEC uh, or competitive local exchange carrier is a telecom provider that's competing with an already established carrier in a market or region. And so phone companies aren't allowed to have monopolies. And so essentially, if a really big national phone company is there, other carriers can get authorized in regional areas to compete with them directly. And there's a lot of laws in the United States around this. We won't dive into them, but uh, it's really an interesting ecosystem. And you probably should go read a little bit on how the actual telecom industry functions, operates, and who all these in, uh, entities are to get a better understanding of how it all works since you're gonna be in the call space. Click to call, this is a type of user interaction for connecting a business or individual. Uh, and basically the way it works is you use a different type of hyperlink that doesn't take you to a website, it actually initiates a phone call on a mobile device. And so what will happen is a user will go to a landing page and they'll see a link that says, or a button maybe that says call now, or even a phone number that is a hyperlink. And when they tap that on their mobile phone, they get a little dialog box that says, would you like to call? And then the phone number, and you either click yes or no, and then it immediately calls that person. And so for mobile, click to call is how everything works. And we're gonna talk a lot about click to call in this course. We're gonna show lots of examples. So if you don't understand exactly what I just said, it's all right, we'll show you in detail a little bit later. A cold transfer or a raw call is a type of transfer where a call is routed immediately to a destination without any initial context or qualification or any other humans involved. And so basically a phone call is generated and you send that off to a call center for someone to answer, that's a raw call. Nothing happened in between, there wasn't an intermediary call center, it's just generate call, call center, raw call. Concurrency or CC, uh, uppercase or lowercase CC as a lot of people call it, is the number of simultaneous calls that a contact center, target, buyer, or campaign can receive or is receiving at any given time. So for instance, if a call center has 25 agents on their floor, their maximum concurrency is 25. That means they can handle 25 live phone calls at any given time. Now, theoretically, that call center is going to have a queue, so if a 26th phone call comes in, it's still going to get answered and queued, but their concurrency is the maximum number of humans they have at any given time. And so when you're working on campaigns in pay-per-call, or you're working with pay-per-call networks, you're always going to ask them on a campaign, how much concurrency do you have available so that you can configure it and load balance your calls appropriately? So if you have a buyer in one city that can handle 25 cc and a buyer in another city that can handle 10 cc, that means that you can handle 35 cc worth of phone calls at any given time and you use software like Ringba to automatically route and load balance that capacity for you so you never overflow any of those call centers uh, and never run over their capacity so you always get paid for your calls. Connect. This is when a caller and a receiving party are connected, whether it be with an agent or a phone system that answers the call. It's whenever two parties are essentially connected on a call. Doesn't necessarily mean that that's two humans. It can even be two computers, but whenever a phone call is initiated, that's what we mean when we say connect. Connected is the actual moment when that call is answered by an agent or an automated system. So it's like ringing, phone's ringing, and then something picks it up, and right when that phone call's picked up, that's when it's connected. And then a connection is the link between different parties on a phone call. And so if I call you, we have a connection between us, an open voice line, uh, and that's what a connection is in a phone call. A contact center, customer contact center, or call center are all businesses that specialize in communicating with customers through a variety of different channels, like voice, email, live chat, SMS, and a whole bunch of other different channels. And so for the most part, these terms can be interchanged with each other. People will say, yeah, I have a call center, yeah, I have a contact center, yeah, I have a BPO even. And what they're talking about is the uh, facility that's actually receiving their phone calls, processing their phone calls, uh, and doing other things. So these centers, don't just answer phone calls, 
and provide support or sales. They also do fulfillment, support, and other business tasks that are needed to actually facilitate the back-end campaigns that are running in the paper call space. A country code is the two-digit ISO code assigned to a country a caller wants to reach when making an international phone call. Uh, for example, if we're talking about the US, it's US, CA is Canada, GB is Great Britain, AU is Australia, uh, and MX is Mexico. This can also be the reference for the country calling code, which is the prefix of every country when dialing it from a foreign country. So for instance, when you wanna call the United States, you have to press one first, and that's our country code. Um, and so every single country on earth, even North Korea has their own country code for accessing the telecommunications network. Deallocate or deallocate number or deallocate a phone number. This is removing a phone number from your Ringba account. And once a number is deallocated, it is released back to the phone carrier and cannot be repurchased or added back to your account. And so basically when you say, I wanna get rid of this phone number, I'm not using it anymore. And so for the most part, anytime you have a new traffic source or you have a new campaign, you're gonna to wanna to get a fresh phone number for it so there's no remnant traffic from other campaigns on that phone number. So you deallocate the ones you aren't using and you get yourself some new ones to run new campaigns. A dial tone is a sound indicating a caller may start to dial on a phone number on a landline phone. So obviously there's no dial tones on mobile. This is a landline thing. You pick up the phone, you hear the dial tone, and when it's there, you can enter in a phone number and be connected with anyone, anywhere in the world at any time. A DID, or direct inward dial number, is a virtual phone number that's used to route inbound calls. And we say it's virtual because it's generated uh, over the internet and it's VoIP, but it is an actual phone number. There's nothing virtual about it in that regard. And so all phone numbers issued inside of Ringba are DIDs. In fact, most phone numbers issued to any VoIP carrier at this point are DIDs. And it's just the term we use for uh, one of these phone numbers. Now, some people also use this term to reference local phone numbers versus toll-free numbers. Um, it can be used interchangeably. I don't know uh, if it's actually accurate, but people definitely do this, so you should be aware. If someone says to you, you know, give me a DID, they may actually be talking about a local phone number versus toll free, and you may wanna clarify that. Disposition or call disposition. This is the record of the outcome or result of a phone call. And so, for example, in a call center, if I take a phone call and that person does not buy from me, I'm gonna set, the disposition as not interested, didn't buy, or call back later, or sale if I sold something, or follow up, or whatever those dispositions are set to in the CRM, a call center is assigning a disposition to just about every single phone call that gets hung up so that they can review those disposition stats at a later date. Distributed call center. This is a call center with remote agents who can be located anywhere in the world, and uh, these agents work from home or a shared office space. Downtime or down, this is the period of time that a system has not been working or available. And in the context of call centers, they refer to any time where something is causing their floor to stop taking calls as being down or having downtime. So if a call center says they're down, that means they're not taking calls for a particular period in time. A dropped call is a phone call that's terminated or disconnected abruptly before the speakers finish their conversation due to some kind of technical difficulty uh, and not the users actually hanging up the phone. So a lot of times what can happen is you have a mobile user and they'll be driving and talking on the phone and then that call gets dropped or disconnected because maybe their coverage doesn't work anymore or someone's phone system went down or they go into a tunnel or there's just a million reasons why a call can be dropped but uh, the point of it is a dropped call is a call that is disconnected by no fault of the people that are actually on the call. A duplicate call, this is a repeat call made by the same caller, uh, usually within a specific period of time. And so paper call networks and most buyers are not gonna pay you for a duplicate call. And that means when a caller calls more than once, uh, they're gonna record that and then not issue a payout event for that call. EPC, or earnings per call, or EP call, 
are the estimated revenues per call generated for a campaign. And so typically, you're gonna calculate this by taking the revenue and dividing it by the number of calls it took to generate. So if you did $1,000 in revenue and you had 100 phone calls, uh, your EPC would be $10 per phone call. And so it's a way to look at all your calls as an estimated earnings uh, per call. We also use this metric to route calls by the uh, estimated earnings per call in our RTB environment and on our routing plan so that we can automatically deliver the highest yield to our Ringba customers so you don't really have to worry about managing that part of your call flow. Failed to connect. This is when a target system is unable to answer or connect a call and it is marked as a failure. And so this happens quite a bit. You have to understand that calls are going to fail and you're going to have technology issues. Essentially, every single buyer that you're working with in pay per call is gonna have a different phone system, a different PBX, a different setup, that call may be routed through five or six different carriers and two or three tracking platforms, you have no idea. And so these things fail all the time and you're gonna to wanna to monitor your calls to see if any specific targets have more failures than others and then deal with that by communicating with them or cutting them off or whatever you wanna do, but essentially you need to main, uh, maintain oversight over all your targets and their technology issues because a lot of the times, believe it or not, they don't even realize they have technology issues. <coughs> oh, excuse me. The FCC or Federal Communications Commission, this is the US government agency responsible for regulating communications by radio, television, wire, satellite, and cable in the United States. And so they're responsible for all the regulations around phone calls and what we do. So it's always a good idea to pay attention to the FCC, new regulations that they're putting out, uh, and any rules that they change for people involved in the paper call space. Floor or call center floor, this is the office area of the call center where agents actually take their calls. And so people in a giant call center will reference different floors. And what they mean is the people in that space that are actually taking the phone calls. Or some people may say, yeah, I have a call center floor or I have a floor of agents. They're just talking about uh, the space filled with people that are actually taking calls. Now floor plan, this is the seating chart, the seating plan for agents that are working in a call center. And so typically call centers try and optimize their space by building out a floor plan to accommodate as many agents comfortably as possible. And when they say their floor plan, they're talking about uh, essentially the agents on their floor and the organization of those agents. Now fulfillment or call center fulfillment or a fulfillment call center is a company that specializes in providing call center and customer support services on behalf of another company. And so if someone mentions that they have a fulfillment call center, what they're talking about is the call center that's actually processing their orders and doing whatever necessary to actually make those sales. It may not be the call center that has the sales agents in it. And so maybe after the call center uh, makes a sale, they transfer that call to the fulfillment call center and that call center confirms everything and then continues to process the order so the salesperson can move on to the next sales call. Geo routing is the routing of calls based on the caller's actual geographic location. And so for instance, with Ringba's technology, you can actually see where a caller is physically located um, not by using their area code, we actually are able to use their IP address and figure out where that caller is actually calling from. And then we allow our clients to route by that information. So if you want to geo route by zip code, for instance, you're able to look at the caller's zip code and then send them to a buyer uh, that wants calls from those specific zip codes. And that's really applicable in spaces that have licensing, like insurance. You have to be licensed in specific areas. And so a lot of the time insurance call centers will use an IVR and ask the user what their zip code is. Our geo routing features allow you to bypass that IVR so you don't have to get information from the customer and just automatically route them to buyers that want those calls, which drastically increases your conversion rate. Granular, when we say granular, we are referring to the specificity of reporting information that is available inside tracking platforms. Uh, examples of this being a caller's device, operating system, geographic location, which can be city, state, zip, country, latitude, longitude, 
their carrier, their uh, landing page, referring data, IP address, more and more and more and more. And so when we talk about granular data, we talk about getting as much data from the user as possible and then optimizing a campaign by that data. So maybe we look at the data and see that callers in specific geographic regions are worth a lot more money and then we change our buyer structure based on that or some of the other information that I listed. Handle time. This is the length of time that a caller spends talking to an agent. So the handle time of a call is essentially the call length after the agent answers. So if someone spends 10 minutes on hold on a 30 minute phone call, the handle time of that call is gonna be 20 minutes and the hold time of that call is going to be 10 minutes. The headset, this is a hands-free device used by contact center agents for communicating with callers. It allows them to free up their hands so they can type while they're on the phone. Anyone that's doing sales that isn't using a headset is crazy. I don't care if they're an independent sales agent at a mortgage company, if they're not using a headset, they're absolutely crazy. So if you're working with a small call center or a small insurance buyer, you actually may want to ask them if they're using headsets, because if they're not, it may be hard for them to take calls and use a keyboard, they may burn those calls. And as silly as it sounds, these are actually things you have to be aware of when you're working in paper call, because you're gonna have to manage everyone, including the buyers. Now hold time, this is the length of time a caller spends waiting on hold to speak to an agent. Uh, hold time is calculated from the moment the call is connected to the moment an agent answers the call. So maybe the call rings for 12 seconds and then it's answered. That's when we start calculating hold time uh, up until the agent actually gets on the phone. Uh, we look at hold time as a statistic in the call center. And in paper call, uh, hold time is not a good thing because when people wait on hold, they're significantly more likely to hang up the phone. And if they hang up the phone and you're on a duration-based billing campaign, uh, which means you only get paid after a specific period of time, you don't get paid when they hang up. So you always wanna listen to your call recordings and make sure that your buyers are not putting a lot of people on hold because they're just murdering your return on investment. Home agents, these are agents that service calls from their house or a shared office uh, instead of a call center facility. Hours of operation, these are the hours that a contact center or call center can actually accept calls. So whenever you're working with a buyer, if it's directly with a call center or with a network or the broker or whoever, you wanna make sure you know the hours of operation that they can take calls because if you send them calls outside of the, those hours of operations, I can guarantee you, you're not getting paid for them. An inbound call is a call that's originated by an external source or a caller. An inbound number is a phone number designated to receive calls in an inbound marketing campaign. And so when someone says, yeah, get, what's your inbound number? Or, Give me a number uh, for inbound calls. That's what they're talking about. It's just simply the phone number that's used for people to call in. Integrations. Uh, this is the ability to connect third-party tools and workflows into either call center software or Ringba or other applications. And so really sophisticated marketers are doing all sorts of integrations to integrate different platforms like Facebook into their call tracking, into their CRM, and with the call center, uh, and just a, a million different applications. IVR, or interactive voice response. This is the system responsible for interacting with callers by requesting they press numbers on the dial pad uh, or speak into their phone. So an example of an IVR is calling up and they say press one for sales, press two for service, you press two, you're connected with service, you press one, you're connected with sales. You can also create surveys inside these things. Um, they're really cool inside Ringba, ours is drag and drop, and it actually has text to speech in 15 different languages, and you can create all sorts of really dynamic call flows inside of an IVR, so you can qualify callers, uh, route them, create routing plans for them, just do all sorts of amazing things. Uh, the I IXC is your inner exchange carrier, and that's just simply a long distance phone company. A landline, uh, which is also a POTS line, and POTS is plain old telephone system, is a telephone line that's made using copper wire. The super old school stuff that's in my walls over here. These phone lines are provided uh, with low voltage power from the uh, phone station so that even during a power outage, the phone lines still work. And they're absolutely in use today all over the world. Not everyone just uses mobile phones uh, and they provide critical services like 911. So if the power goes out and you have an emergency, 
you can pick up the uh, landline phone and still dial 911 and still get someone on the phone, even though your mobile phone may not work. LCR, or least cost routing. This is the process of selecting routing of a phone call uh, based on the carrier cost. So which route the phone call takes through all the carriers to reduce, reduce the cost. An LEC is a local exchange carrier. And this is just a local telephone company. Maybe they operate in a city or a county or a state. They're not a national carrier. A leg is a segment of the entire network to network path that a call is routed to. For instance, when someone references the outbound leg of a call, they're speaking about the route from their system or platform to the end user. An inbound leg refers to the opposite. That's the route from the caller to their phone system or platform. So when someone calls a Ringba number, the inbound leg is when that person calls the phone number and it connects them into Ringba, and the outbound leg is the call that actually is initiated and goes to the buyer. Line busy, when a phone number has reached the maximum number of concurrent calls the line can handle, it's line busy. So phone calls or phone numbers can actually handle multiple calls uh, concurrently to them. So when you dial a Ringba number, you could have five callers or 500 callers concurrently dialing the same phone number. Now, we have unlimited concurrency, so you don't have to worry about this, but if you have a phone number that doesn't, once a maximum number of concurrent callers are on it, you get a line busy signal. Load balancing, this is the process of optimizing how calls are routed based on capacity and or performance. And so if you have uh, 25 concurrent calls coming in, you may only have buyers in certain areas that can take those calls, or maybe some buyers pay more money than other buyers. On uh, your load balancing is the process of optimizing where your calls go and how they're handled to maximize the amount of money you get paid for them. A local number is a type of phone number that's associated with a specific geographic location. So in the United States, we have uh, hundreds of area codes. For instance, my cell phone's area code is 248, which is from Michigan, where I grew up. And so that number uh, is my local number. It's registered to that county, that specific geographic region. And anytime you're marketing to a specific geographic region, you wanna have local numbers in that region be your phone numbers so people think that you're a local business there. Local number portability is the ability to reassign a local phone number to a different carrier. Uh, types of porting, service provider portability, geographic portability, service portability, um, all those things tie into local number portability, but essentially it boils down to this. If you have a local phone number for your place, maybe that's in uh, Tampa, Florida, and you decide you move your business to Georgia, but you want to keep the phone number, you can port it from one phone company to another. They cannot hold that phone number, you get to keep it, you can take it when, wherever you wanna go. And anytime you move a phone number from one carrier to another, it's called a port. And so if you wanna bring all your current phone numbers from your current carrier into Ringba, or one of our competitors into Ringba, or whatever you wanna do, we're gonna port those numbers in for you. Missed dials, these are connected calls where the caller dialed an incorrect number. So if, you own the phone number 1-800-888-5000 and someone dials 1-800-888-4000, that's a misdial. They accidentally were connected to the wrong phone number. And so there's actually a lot of ways to monetize those numbers. We'll talk about that later in the course. MMS is a multimedia message system. Uh, it's the technical term for a text message that includes multimedia files, such as pictures, audio, and video. A mobile number is the phone number of a mobile phone or device that connects to networks wirelessly. And so your cell phone number is a mobile number. Mobile number portability is the ability to reassign a mobile number to a different carrier. So if you switch your phone from Verizon to AT&T, you can keep your number and you're gonna port it from one carrier to another, just like a local number. No connects, these are calls that were initiated but dropped or unanswered by the destination target. So if you have calls coming in and you try and connect those calls to a target and the target doesn't answer for whatever reason or bounces the call, that's a no connect. No target answered 
is when a call is not answered by any of the, any of the campaign's targets and Ringba throws this error event. It essentially means that you attempted to have a phone call connected to a target, that target was dialed, the phone rang, and for whatever reason, the target did not answer the phone. Now, we can't tell you why they didn't answer the phone. Typically, it's a capacity issue. They do not want to answer that call and put it in a hold queue because typically there's a percentage chance that they're going to be liable for the payout on that call, whether anyone answers or not. And so they just let it ring and ring and ring. So you're on the hook uh, and have to eat the loss. And so that's what no target answered means. And it's important to understand that statistic and review it and stay on top of it. We're going to walk you through more of that later in the course. No target found. This is when there are no targets available to take your phone calls based on routing criteria for a call and Ringba throws this error. So if you have a call that comes in and it's in Florida and none of your buyers accept Florida phone calls, uh, there's no target found that can take that call. North American numbers are phone numbers for the United States and Canada. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether a toll-free number is issued in the US or Canada, it operates the same way. So if you take a toll-free number from the United States and you promote that number to Canadians, uh, phone calls will be connected and you'll be billed the exact same way. There's literally no difference. And so it's nice and easy to take a US campaign and transition it over to Canada if you can sell your products and services to Canada or vice versa, because the phone numbers operate exactly the same way. Number format is the format used to display a phone number generated by Ringba's JavaScript tag. And so you can specify the format inside your account and Ringbo will automatically format your dynamic numbers visually the way you prefer so they fit nicely into your website. For instance, one of our number format settings would look like this. Uh, it's a parenthesis, NNN, parenthesis, space, NNN, hyphen, NN, NN. And so what will happen then is all your phone numbers, regardless of what they are for this campaign, will automatically display it to, be, to look exactly like that, but with the actual phone numbers in it. And you can format that any which way you want. You can remove the parentheses, add another hyphen, merge them all together, doesn't really matter. Uh, you have full control over it. Number locking. This is when a phone number from a number pool inside Ringba is assigned to a user, uh, and Ringba locks it for a specific period of time so that, you, that user has time to call. And this is associated with uh, our number pool technology, which we're gonna dive into in this course. You're absolutely gonna wanna know how to use it because Ringba's number pool attribution technology is by far the most sophisticated of any platform in the business. So if you want to drive calls uh, from media or media buys on the internet, uh, Ringba's technology is by far the best, which means you can get the highest yield or the greatest return on your investment by using it. A number pool, this is a group of phone numbers used for caller analytics from all your online marketing. And we're going to show you how to leverage this later in the course. Number pool misses are when all the numbers inside of your number pool are in use by other sessions. Uh, when you start to see this warning, it lets you know that you need to reevaluate the size of your number pool. And uh, the cool thing about Ringba is you have an account representative that's available over chat or email. You can call them anytime. They can actually help you with all your configurations for all your marketing campaigns so that you can get this stuff absolutely right and make a lot more money that way. On site. These are agents that service calls from an office or a call center facility. They actually work in the physical location of the call center. Optimizing call flow or optimizing your call flow is the process of improving your return on investment for your efforts by changing settings and rules inside of your campaign's configuration to better deliver calls to buyers, make sure more calls get answered, and make sure the buyers that are paying the most money get the most phone calls. Uh, this is also called call flow optimization, and we absolutely will help you with this process once you get started. Your account manager uh, is an expert in call flow optimization and all the things Ringba can do to help you make more money. So you should absolutely communicate with your account manager at all times. All of them work with hundreds of buyers, hundreds of sellers, tons of clients uh, of all different shapes and sizes. So they have a lot of experience. You should leverage that and definitely work with your Ringba account manager to optimize your call flow. An outbound call, or just outbound, is a call originated by an agent uh, to reach a customer outside of their contact center location. Or simply put, that's when they're dialing for dollars. They're dialing out to reach people uh, who are on their lists. 
Overages is a term that you're really only going to be familiar with if you work with our competitors because we don't charge any overages, uh, but a lot of our competitors do. And these are additional costs that's charged when you go over your pre-negotiated usage rate. So if your business grows over your pre-negotiated usage rate, a lot of our competitors will charge you an overage fee that's significantly higher than your standard per minute rate. So you really wanna watch out for this, uh, but if you're gonna work with us, you don't have to worry about that. We simply do not charge overages and we don't force people to pre-buy the number of minutes that they use. We treat all of our clients like partners and that's super important to us. You're never gonna see any of this nonsense on our platform. Overflow, this is the excess call traffic that's greater than a call center's capacity. So if a call center has 25 agents and they have uh, 30 calls coming in, their overflow is five calls. And so with Ringba, what you can do is monitor your concurrency of your buyers. And then if they have overflow or can't take those calls, we'll automatically reroute them to other buyers so you don't lose them. A paid call is a call that meets the conversion criteria and triggers a commissionable event. And so if you have a call and it pays out $10 after one minute, that call hits one minute, it's now a paid call. The payout is the money paid to your publishers for every conversion that meets a campaign's criteria. So if you decide to work with publishers or affiliates and they're sending you calls on a pay per call basis, uh, the payout is the amount of money you pay them for a qualified call on a campaign. So just like the other example, if you have a call that pays out at a minute, you pay your publishers 10 bucks, their payout after a minute is 10 bucks. It's that simple. Pay per call or PP call, this is the advertising, billing, and performance marketing model for connecting businesses with inbound customer calls. It's why we're here. It's a really exciting space, and I really appreciate you guys taking the time to learn all this material with me so that we can bring more people into the pay per call space and help a lot of people make a lot more money. A pay per call network is a business or platform that manages pay per call campaigns on behalf of advertisers and generates calls through a network of publishers. So they work with a whole bunch of publishers that do all sorts of different promotion, whether it be guys who buy billboards or use Google ads or social ads or Facebook or email, doesn't matter. Whatever those affiliates and publishers are doing to generate their calls. And then they also operate a whole bunch of advertisers, brokers, and call buyers on the other side that pay them whenever they get a qualified call. And then they make connections and connect all these people in the middle while taking a margin uh, and manage all the capacity on the back end and paying off all the publishers on the front end. And we're gonna dive into uh, what paper call networks do and how they really function in another lesson. Paper callers are anybody that's involved in the paper call industry. Uh, doesn't matter where they're at in the value chain, they call themselves paper callers. And so if you get into this space and you're gonna start working in paper call, you're a paper caller. It is also the name of the industry's only forum that you can find at papercallers.com. A PBX or private business exchange, uh, this is a long-winded term for a business phone system. And so it's a private phone system that powers a business or a contact center. And PBX systems can be physical, located on premise, or remote in the cloud and provide a wide range of services. Some of the services they may uh, provide are transferring calls, IBR systems, voicemail, call recordings, queues, all that good stuff. And so, uh, believe it or not, you can actually still buy giant refrigerator-sized phone systems to put in a call center. Uh, I think most new call centers aren't doing that anymore, but a lot of big call centers are powered by these giant physical phone systems. Per minute usage, this is the associated cost for a single minute of voice traffic through a platform or provider. So every platform, including us, charges per minute for usage. Uh, that's just your per minute usage. So every minute of phone call that goes through the platform, you pay a very, very, very tiny fee for. Per seat is a billing model used in the call center world that refers to billing a customer on a per seat basis which implies a concurrency billing model as multiple people may share the same seat. So an example is a call center that has 100 desks uh, and seats for agents. So they're gonna have to license 100 seats of CRM software. They're gonna license their CRM software on a per seat basis. And that means up to 100 people can log in at any given time. 
Porting, like we said before, number portability. This is the process of switching a phone number from one carrier to another, uh, and they have to let you do it. OTS, or plain old telephone system. Uh, this is a traditional phone line that uses copper wires to deliver voice services to users. So when you plug your phone into the wall using a standard phone cord, you're connecting it to a POTS telephone line. A predictive dialer, or simply dialer, because most of them are predictive at this point, is an outbound calling system that automatically dials from a list of telephone numbers. Uh, it's also sometimes known as a robo dialer or auto dialer, but essentially what it does is look at the number of agents that are available. So if you have five agents are available, uh, and then looks at the statistics for the number of people that are picking up the phone per minute or per second, and tries to connect a person with an agent in real time so that they're sitting around uh, as little as possible, so that the agents are on the phone as much as humanly possible. And that's why they call it predictive. It's actually predicting when someone's gonna answer the phone and trying to balance uh, the number of agents with the number of people that they're getting to answer. Priority is a scoring var variable used by Ringba to determine which target in the system to send the call. So you can prioritize your targets. So if you have two targets that uh, both have nationwide coverage, but one is paying $12 versus 11, you can prioritize the $12 one so that most of your calls go there or the maximum amount of calls go there. Or maybe they only have two people that can answer the phone, but you constantly have those two people on the phone because they're set at the highest priority. A PSTN, this is a public switch telephone network. Uh, and this is the aggregate of the world's interconnected communications network. So it's like the global public switch telephone network that connects every country uh, and essentially almost every person in the world at this point. QA or quality assurance. This is the process of determining whether a call or agent's performance meets specific rules or requirements. And so you're gonna do quality assurance on your publishers to make sure that they're delivering calls the way you want. You're gonna do quality assurance on the calls to make sure that they're the quality that they need to be and all the rules are follow followed. You're gonna do quality assurance on your buyers to make sure all of their agents are following all the rules. Uh, you're gonna do QA on just about everybody in this space. And the more QA you do, um, the more you're gonna learn and the better handle you're gonna have on your business. QoS, or quality of service, is the metric carriers use for measuring the voice quality on a call. Was that call choppy? Was the voice clear? Was it a good phone call? Um, that's what we call QoS. Now, raw call is an inbound call, whether it's answered or not, and this term is typically used to describe a billing method where the buyer is responsible for paying for every call, whether they answer it or not. So an example of that would be $10 per raw call. I'll give you $10 per raw call. That means any call you send me, whether I answer it or not, as long as you have independent third-party tracking like Ringba that they can log into, they're going to pay for that phone call. Uh, and so some, some publishers prefer raw call so that they don't have to worry about uh, the behavior of the call center, whether they answer it or not, but you're typically gonna get paid a lot less for a raw call than you are for an answered call or a duration-based call. And we'll talk about this a lot more as the course progresses. Recording, uh, also two-channel recording or call recording. This is the act of recording and storing an audio file of a phone call. Now it's usually the whole phone call and two-channel recordings record each party, uh, the caller and the agent, on a separate audio channel in a single file. And you can hear them separately on the right and left speakers. So you know you have two channel recording when you hear the agent on one side and the caller on the other. Now, if you're ever listening to a recording and you only hear the agent on one side and not the caller on the other, but the agent is clearly talking, before you hit up support, make sure that your speakers handle two channel recording or that your left speaker or whatever is actually plugged in, okay? Because we see it occasionally, it's usually pretty funny. Um, but if you don't have two channels on your speakers or they're not plugged in properly, you actually can't hear the whole call recording. Redials, this is when a caller who was previously called connects with an agent using the same phone number. A repeat call or duplicate call is basically the same thing. It's a call from someone who has previously called in. Uh, duplicate calls typically aren't gonna be paid for. Reporting is the analytics and tools for reviewing your call traffic, your call logs, 
caller details, all your recordings, uh, basically all the metrics around how your business actually operates. And so in Ringbo, we call it reporting as well. You go to your reporting, you see all the information you need about all your calls. A rest board is the company responsible for registering and provisioning individual toll-free numbers. Uh, and they have to be licensed by the US government to do that. And it's called a responsible organization. The Ringba JavaScript tag or Ringba tracking tag or even just Ringba tag is a snippet of code used by Ringba to track information about users and to display phone numbers on websites. So if you have phone numbers on your web pages and you're using those phone numbers to generate inbound phone calls, you're gonna be using our JavaScript tracking technology that's gonna help you optimize everything uh, in the entire value chain. It's really great technology and you're gonna to wanna to understand how to use that so that you can optimize your campaigns by the most granular level you can with any platform in the entire industry. Ringing, this is the period of time that a call is waiting to be answered. So when you dial a phone uh, number on your phone and it rings, you wait, that's ringing. Ring list voicemail is a method of leaving a pre-recorded audio message in someone's voicemail without their phone actually ringing. This is also known as a voicemail drop, a ringless voicemail drop, or RVD, or RVM. Um, and before you get into ringless voicemail, which can be a very profitable way to gener generate all different types of uh, phone calls, you wanna understand the rules and regulations behind ringless voicemail. Some states aren't cool with it. There's certain marketing practices you have to understand. And so if you're gonna get into ringless, uh, make sure you do a lot of research and understand the rules behind it because if you break them, you can actually get fined by the US government and those fines are not cheap. A robocall, this is an automated call done by a computer that plays back a pre-recorded message to the person that answers the phone. Uh, again, you also need to be very aware of what you're doing if you're gonna get into robocalling. We don't actually provide any robocalling software at this point, but it's out there. Um, and it is legal depending on how you do it, but you need to understand all of the rules and regulations behind it. Otherwise you could violate those rules and again be fined by the US government. And that is never a fun thing to wake up to. Routing plan, this is a collection of targets for managing call flows and routing call traffic inside of your tracking platform. And so inside a Ringbo, when you create a campaign, you're gonna create a routing plan. And inside that routing plan, you add all of your different buyers and targets in there and configure all the rules around where your phone calls go. And so that's why we call it a routing plan. It's a plan for where all your calls go and then we automatically handle everything for you. RPC or revenue per call. This is the gross revenue generated per inbound call to a call center. So this is a really important statistic to a call center. This is calculated by taking the gross revenue and dividing it by the number of calls that were taken uh, to generate that revenue. And so if you made $100,000 and you took 10,000 phone calls, your RPC would be $10 per call. And so that's a really simplistic example, but a call center would use their RPC in a paper call environment to really determine whether or not they're, being, uh, they're profitable for all of their call streams. So the call center is gonna know what their cost per call is uh, for labor and overhead and running their call center. And then they're gonna know how much they're paying per call because they're buying them pay per call. So maybe they're paying $10 per call and their cost to take the call is $5 per call. And that means their total cost is $15 per call. Their revenue per call needs to be greater than $15 per call. Otherwise they're losing money. And that's how they use this statistic. And so when you're working with a pay per call network or a buyer, it's always good to figure out what the call center's revenue per call is because then you can use that as leverage to negotiate. If you know that the call center maybe uh, has a maximum of $5 cost to answer it and they're paying you $10 per call and their revenue per call is $450, well guys, it's time to go negotiate. So you wanna figure out what that RPC is so that you can use it to your advantage. Schedule adherence, this is a method of measuring how close an agent follows their schedule. And so schedule adherence is expressed by taking the total time a call center agent is available and dividing it by the time they are scheduled to work. And so in call centers, you have to stay on top of all the agents. You have hundreds of people typically working under the same roof uh, and leaders and managers and all different types of staff, people doing all sorts of different things. 
And the goal is to monitor their efficiency and make sure that they're sticking or adhering to their schedule so that their productivity is as high as possible. A seat, this is a position or availability in a call center for an agent to take calls. It's not the number of employees or agents they have, it's just the number of chairs they have available for people to sit down in and take calls. So in a call center, they may run six hour or eight hour shifts. They may have three, four, five shifts a day, depending on how they do it. And so if they have 50 seats, they may run 50 people per shift or less, depending on the time of day. A seat fee or seat fees uh, are the cost of associated with operating a single seat. So if you run a call center and you're thinking about what your seat fees are, it's the cost of everything associated with that single seat. Or if you're outsourcing a campaign to a third party BPO, they may charge you a flat seat fee. And so they may go, all right, well, you need 10 seats, 12 hours a day, your seat fee per, uh, your seat fee per day is X. Self-reporting, this is when a party provides reporting information about calls and conversions without full transparency for all the parties involved. And so what happens a lot in this space is the call center will say, uh, we'll send you reporting. And so you drive a lot of calls into the call center and they don't have their own tracking platform. Maybe they're not using Ringbus so they can't give you an account so you can see the statistics verified by a third party. And at the end of the day, uh, if you're lucky, because some of them are sloppy, they send you a spreadsheet with all the calls in it. But you have absolutely no way of verifying that information. You do not know if they put all the calls in that sheet. Maybe they did it maliciously. Maybe they just aren't on top of their stuff, so they didn't do it maliciously. Maybe they overpaid you. I have no idea. But if someone is self-reporting, specifically a call center, you should be extremely wary of that situation. And that's why you absolutely need your own call tracking so that you can keep track of all the phone calls, where they went, how much people owe you, all that good stuff. And I will tell you right now that there is not an expert in pay per call that will dispute that anyone that's heavily involved in the space should have their own call tracking. It pretty much is the bare minimum for getting started in the space. Short duration calls. These are extremely short phone calls that last for five seconds or less. Sometimes people consider only one second calls short duration, but phone companies do not like short duration phone calls uh, because they're at very high risk of being spam or some other type of potentially fraudulent activity. So short duration calls are not good. SIP, uh, this is session initiated protocol and SIP is a VoIP protocol used by most cloud-based phone service providers or even things like Skype. And so using SIP allows you to take a VoIP call and connect it directly to another party without passing it through the offline telecom system, uh, preserving higher voice quality and reducing connection times. So every time a call is routed from a normal phone to a uh, phone line to VoIP, it will tip typically be compressed. The audio is digitally compressed and then quality is lost. Um, it also increases the connection times, which increases the likelihood that someone will hang up the phone. And so anytime you can find a buyer that will accept a SIP phone call, you're putting yourself, your affiliates, and your buyer in a better situation because that buyer is going to have faster connection times, uh, lower overall cost for them. There, you can do all sorts of really amazing things with a SIP header as opposed to a phone call. Um, SIP is essentially the future. And so some call centers will take SIP phone calls. Some PBXs don't even support it. But if you can find buyers that can accept SIP, you can do some amazing things. You should always be asking your buyers if you can send them a SIP call instead of an actual phone call. You're gonna see a boost in conversion rate, which is literally dollars in your bottom line for doing just about no work. Now a SIP endpoint is uh, the connection address used to route a call using VoIP without connecting it to a telephone network. It's also known as a SIP address but it's kind of like a URL or an FTP address. It has similar formatting. Some SIP endpoints are actually URLs. Some of them are just IP addresses. Uh, some of them require usernames and passwords or whitelisting. Uh, Ringba can always help you with this. Your account man manager can always help you with this. But uh, SIP is really the way you want to go. Now, a SIP header is the header of a packet that's SIP, uh, sent using the SIP protocol. And so this header can contain information about the call unlike any other normal traditional call where you just dial, 
that allows you to attribute it to specific data similar to traditional online marketing tracking links or click tracking. And so that's what's really cool about SIP. And so in Ringba, when you send a SIP call to a call center, we automatically embed a call ID. Uh, not to be cute, uh, confused with a caller ID, but an actual call ID with that SIP header packet. And then the call center can grab that call ID, and when they make a sale or a certain event happens, they can fire that call ID back to us to one of our webhooks with the agent that took the call, the commission on the call, so you can do real-time rev share campaigns, um, or you can then attribute which calls are actually converting all the way back to specific Google keywords or other attribution data from your publishers. So uh, I would say that a small percentage of people on our platform are actually leveraging this technology, but the people that are, are the ones that are growing the fastest, and I know for a fact have the highest return on investment of any call uh, in their specific verticals. So if you can find buyers that can handle SIP calls, you definitely wanna talk to us because you can do some amazing stuff that just makes everyone a whole hell of a lot more money. Now, SIP Trunk is a VoIP technology based on SIP that provides the ability to deliver a telephone uh, communication service online. So basically, a SIP Trunk allows you to send a phone call out and then a phone company will trunk it uh, and give you access to their network and actually connect it with an end user, whether they're on a mobile device or an actual telephone, um, doesn't really matter. Uh, but it's the, the actual facility that allows the connection uh, of the terminating endpoint of a call. And so SMS, this is a short message service. Uh, the technical term for this is a text message. These messages have specific length restrictions based on country and carrier. So if you're gonna get into the SMS space, and you wanna move your campaigns overseas or you wanna work in different countries, you should be aware that each country has its own restrictions on how long an SMS message can be and other rules around them. So if you take a US message, uh, which is maybe longer than some countries and you send it to somewhere else, it may count as multiple SMS messages you're billed for, so you wanna be careful as, uh, with that. Speech to text is assistive technology that uses computers to translate spoken language into actual text. It's also known as transcription. A sub account, these are uh, employee or team member accounts that are controlled by your main account to allow permission-based access to different areas of Ringba. For instance, you can give employees reporting access or other types of access, buyers access, publishers access. They're just sub accounts in our system uh, and that's what we reference them as the sub accounts. Now, sub ID is an identification variable that tracks specific information about a user or a click, and they're typically used with keywords, traffic sources, or some other kind of data to attribute a user's action to a specific source. So if you're working with a traffic source and they wanna give you their sub ID, or sometimes called click ID, and then when someone calls or that call converts, uh, they want you to post that sub ID back to them so that they can track the conversion so you can optimize your campaigns. We can absolutely help you configure that. Uh, just get with your Ringba rep, but that's what it's for. Tag routing. This is the ability to dynamically route calls using tags or data points inside a Ringba. So when a call comes in, we tag it with a whole bunch of metadata, uh, maybe the location of the call, uh, the browser operating system, device type, whatever information we can get realistically, we tag that call with it, and then you can make decisions based on that data inside of our routing inside the Ringba platform. Now the target is the receiving party of a call. Okay, this is your buyer, and it's usually this, a salesperson, a call center, marketplace, broker, paper, call network, whoever it is. Target number is the phone number or SIP address of a target that will be used to route calls to them. So your target's gonna have a phone number or a SIP endpoint or SIP address to send the call to. You configure it, when a call comes in, goes to that target, we dial or we send that call to the target. Target priority, this is the priority of, of a target and uh, it's, it's used to determine where the call will be routed if there are multiple targets that are open and have available concurrency. Now a target timeout is the amount of time that a target has to answer a call before that call is automatically routed to another target. So let's say it rings for 10 seconds and you have a 10 second target timeout. Once that 10 second happens, uh, Ringba automatically routes the call to another target, hopefully so that they answer without the caller hanging up. Now your target weight is a subsetting of the target priority and weight allows you to 
add a target to a campaign and adjust its relative priority within a group without reorganizing numerous other targets. So weight is calculated after priority. So maybe you have three call centers that are all paying you the same, so they're all priority one, but you want one of them to get more of the calls because uh, they, they're just a more reputable company and you're pretty sure that they're gonna pay. You can give them a higher weight inside of that priority group and route a sp specific percentage of your calls to that target. And again, your targets are just destinations or phone numbers for inbound calls. They're gonna be the people that are answering the calls, the buyers that are actually paying for them. Now your total call length, uh, or TCL, is a specific, uh, a specific metric that we use to measure all the calls uh, in a campaign. And so that's all of the time spent on the phone for every call over a specific period of time in a single campaign. For instance, if you had 10 calls that were each 30 minutes, you'd have a total call length of five hours. To calculate this, we take 30 minutes times 10 calls for 300 minutes, and then divide that by 60 for a conversion to hours, and is five hours of total call length. Now, a telco provider or carrier, this is a company that provides telecommunications products or services. They're their phone companies. Uh, we use tons of telco providers at Ringbo. We're not a actual phone company, we don't own any copper wires in the ground or wireless cell towers, so we work with all the telco providers to actually get those phone calls connected. We also call them carriers. The termination point, the call termination point refers to connecting a call to an end user's mobile or landline phone, that's the termination point. Uh, the termination point refers to the phone number of the end user that the call is being terminated to. And so when you terminate a call, it's not hanging up the call, it's actually getting the call to the end user, the termination point of the loop. Now text-to-speech, this is assistive technology that uses computers to read text aloud. Like I said before, Ringba has text-to-speech in 15 different languages, in male and female, and so you basically can type out your IVR menus or type out your whisper messages uh, or whatever message you want, and our text-to-speech engine will actually read it on the phone for you. Now, a TFN, or toll-free number, or sometimes referred to as telephone number inter interchangeably, is the type of phone number where the receiving party pays for telephone costs. This is mostly irrelevant now in the United States and Canada with the advent of unlimited, unlimited calling plans. Uh, most people can just call whoever they want, whenever they want, for a flat monthly fee. However, we find that toll-free numbers have a much higher conversion rate uh, as they are associated with trust for specific campaigns. So if you're running a campaign and it's not to a local audience, you usually wanna use a toll-free number um, so that more people trust it and will pick up the phone and call. And so Ringba also maintains a giant portfolio of actual 800 numbers, uh, which are 800 numbers, and all sorts of vanity numbers that we have available to our clients as well. So depending on the campaign that you're running, you, want, you may want a vanity number or just a toll-free number or a true 800 number. Uh, your account rep can handle, uh, can help you with that. And they can also help you determine whether or not uh, you actually need a toll-free number. So you should always communicate with your account rep. Time to call. This is the time between when a user is shown a phone number on their website and when they actually pick up the phone and call. This is calculated by subtracting the time uh, when the user was first shown the phone number on the website from the time when they actually called. Uh, we keep track of all the time to call for campaign optimization and changes you wanna make in our system. Time to connect. This is the time between when a call is accepted into Ringba and the moment it's actually connected with a target. Toll-free number portability is the ability to reassign a toll-free number to a different carrier. So if you have your uh, toll-free numbers right now with your local phone company and you wanna start tracking your calls, we can actually port them over to Ring before you uh, and maintain those phone numbers and then you get all the analytics and all the systems behind Ringbo with your phone numbers. And so it doesn't matter where your toll-free number is actually hosted today, you have the right to port it anywhere. But there's typically a fee associated with that. Albeit small, there is usually a fee. Uh, transcription, this is the process of converting speech to text. A trunk. Uh, these are individual channels or circuits that can be grouped. Uh, and this is the smallest denominator for a telecom network facility. 
it represents one channel or one circuit. Now trunking is the process of grouping individual channels or circuits together, uh, and then they can be used to terminate large volumes of concurrent phone calls. Voice, uh, this is a term used to describe a specific type of traffic over a network. Uh, for instance, someone may say we have a thousand minutes per day of voice traffic. What they're talking about is uh, VoIP, uh, voice over the internet or voice over internet protocol. Now, voicemail, this is a computer-based system that allows users to exchange voice messages via telephone. I'm sure you've all heard it or used it. You call up, you leave someone a message, that message is sent to them, they can listen to it, they can do whatever they want. VoIP or voice over internet protocol, uh, phone and voice services that happen over the internet without requiring a user to use traditional copper wire phone lines. So many international calls are, rout are routed over VoIP at this point to reduce the transport cost of the call uh, and to keep the load on the copper wires down over, uh, over the oceans. And so it's much easier to send a voice call over the internet because you can compress the data than it is to really send it over a, an actual copper wire for a live phone call. So services like Google Voice, Skype, uh, and all the other voice services on the internet, even your mobile phone providers, they all use VoIP to connect telephone networks, uh, networks together and allow their users to make phone calls. A VoIP pro provider is simply a provider of VoIP services, including infrastructure, billing, customer care, access, all that stuff. Uh, and the term Vox is the formal definition of vocal or voice, and Vox is traditionally paired with some other form of name to create a brand for the VoIP industry. For instance, Voxbone is one of the largest VoIP companies in Europe. Warm transfer. Uh, this is a type of transfer where an agent actually speaks to a person uh, they, uh, before they transfer the call to another party. And so what's gonna happen in a warm transfer situation is an inbound call is gonna come in, an agent's gonna answer it, they're gonna ask the person on the other end of the phone some information about them, usually basic qualifying information. So if it's a lawn care warm transfer line, uh, someone's gonna call in, the first thing the agent's gonna do is ask them where they're located and do they want lawn service? And if they're like, no, I was looking for a car dealership, clearly that's not a call, qualified call. But if the person is in the right geographic location and they want the service and qualify for it, they will transfer that call by calling another call center and handing off the user to another call center agent. Uh, and typically, warm transfers pay out significantly higher than uh, just a raw call. A welcome message. This is a recording or text-to-speech message a caller hears when their call is initially answered. And so you can do this with an IVR or other type of systems, but basically when someone uh, calls in, they hear a message. Maybe they hear, thank you for calling ABC Lawn Care. Uh, please hold while we transfer you to an agent. Just a welcome message. A whisper message is a message that's played back to the receiving party of a call, which is typically your call center agent, before it's connected to give them information about the call or caller. And so in Ringba, for instance, you can configure whisper messages to your targets so that when the agent answers the phone, they can hear, you know, like Google AdWords from Publisher123. So they know where that call came from and how to handle that call. A wireless provider. This is a provider of wireless telecommunication services, including infrastructure, billing, customer care, uh, provisioning computer systems, and repair of all those networks. And so Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, these are some really big wireless providers in the United States. Workforce management. This is the process of maximizing the performance and productivity and competency for an organization, including staffing, scheduling, training, forecasting, monitoring, and general oversight. And so workforce management is a really big deal in the call center space. Uh, lots of big call centers have entire workforce management teams uh, where all they do is sit around all day and figure out how to optimize their workforces to make sure that they have the right amount of people doing the right tasks at the right time and are meeting quality standards.